that it's, it's a beautiful way to look at things, and I can do simple things. Right. I don't. I don't have to convert anything. New new call. I actually made a new call. Call Bubba because uh, how he's doing. How are you going to engage that? And then think for a moment. If I don't have the earth to worry about or gravity, mm-hmm. where do I want to be? All those are simple things to do. If you neglect one, you kill you kill all offensive operations and all all your business. If you don't do simple things on a daily basis, that's right. All right. Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Joseph Caldwell, and I have special guest with me, Tom Shea, and we are the Sales Wolves. How's that? Mine was better than yours, Joe. You like that? (laughs) (laughs) So this is episode number 168, and I have special guest with us, Tom Shea, uh, 23-year Navy SEAL. And you may be wondering, what does that have to do with sales? But boy, do we have a doozy for you today. And it relates to sales. And as you know, when we the way that we look at sales is that everybody's in sales. If you're a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home dad, then you've got to sell yourself on cleaning the place, keeping everything together. You've got to sell your kids on eating their broccoli. I mean, every interaction, because sales is just relationships. Hmm. And, um, and so we're going to talk about some foundational things, but Tom's background, I think is very relevant and, and he brings some experience from an area that most of us never get to interact with. And one of the things that impacted me the most about Tom and really made me soul search was, was when he told me that on every mission, they ran out of food, water, ammunition and any chance of success which, which success is living yeah um and and so most of us don't face that in our careers um even in the current crisis that's going on in the pandemic we we typically don't face that in our careers and so um that environment's unique and that brings a different perspective and so i'm honored that you're here man. yeah thanks Thank joe you. yeah Thank thanks you so man. much man for uh for doing this with me I love the opportunity to talk about sales because I look at it differently than you. Because I I grew up in a in a uh, world that you weren't you know making money doing what you were doing, but you had to be on point all the time. Right. Like selling somebody your mission was secondary. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of that, but what I call now in definitely in the business world being on point sales okay being very articulate about what you're who you are and what you ask for right. and pro- my problem is i do that all the time like i don't i'm not interested in anything that ain't going to convert something right moving somebody one inch down the road and you know and, you know thanks for helping with the book that you and i help you know each other write so to speak uh i just boil it down into you have to be on point in three areas in business the first area which is what you would call sales finding new people to interact with and convert them to something important right whether you're selling a widget or whether you're selling yourself or selling them on their own movement spending that hour a freaking day being on point looking for new opportunities that's right and i found nobody does that <laughs> yeah so i'm a salesman moved. but i'm going to sit around not doing anything today because or i'm going to talk to only the people that i already know or they do what i find is in in sales they do busy work or they're ruled by the tyranny of the urgent yep and and that's a harsh uh, taskmaster and and so what you're talking about and especially when we talk about Tom's book, which is unbelievable, you can get a pre-order of that book. It's called Three Simple Things, Amazon. The, the man, I'm getting the hardback to put on my shelf. I'm getting the softback to read, um, to mark up and go through and read again and see what I marked up the first time. <laughs> and, and then I'm getting it so I can listen to it. Dude, I'm excited to get it myself. I still haven't got my own book. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, uh, but three simple things, and you just talked about the first one. Yeah. And th- that's considered an offensive move, right? Offense. Offense. So, yeah. 
So every day, even in this chaotic environment, right? Because this pandemic has people caught in chaos and fear and chaos and fear breeds inactivity and isolation. And, and no matter what kind of sales you are in, there's something you can do today. Yes, yeah, something, yeah, so, you know, so I retired five years ago, maybe six, it feels like a hundred. So <laughs> six years ago, I was asked to come in and help organizations transform. Mm -hmm. You know, bring in a consultant, we have this problem. The one thing that I saw across the board is the salespeople made shit too complicated. Right. And I'm like, I can't be that bad. Get on the phone. Do one new client engagement every day, Saturdays and Sundays end with day. It has to happen every single day. And they're putting it off and doing it three days a week or doing it in a sprint and then not doing it for three weeks. Yep. What would happen if you engage one new client a day, you would have 365 new clients. One new a day. That's right. I don't know how many it takes to get one new, but you can't wait four weeks to get on the offense. Right. So what I found that was really relevant, one new client engagement a day. If it takes you an hour, it takes an hour. So sectioning off an hour of every single day to be on the offense. Like you literally have to prospect one new engagement. Mm -hmm. If they're if you've already contacted them, that's not it. One new person a day. The second one that's is what, what you, everybody what you does. you just said, people get caught up in though. They go, well, I didn't get them today, so that'll be my one new one next yeah. Next day. No, 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 that's follow up. That's Yeah, that's yeah, now that's not... an existing, which is the second of the three simple things. Deal with his existing clients. Be on the defense. Be on the defense. So you, you know, somebody's done something with you. Reengage them every day. You got to reengage one existing client that you've already contacted. One new, one existing, and then the most difficult that I saw that great salespeople have is they allow themselves to turn off all the bullshit, get into a safe space, and think if all this wasn't my problem that I'm dealing with, mm -hmm. where do I want to be in two to three years? I'm not seeing anybody think further than three years articulately. Right. You can have a 10 year plan and you're going to wipe your butt with that. Yeah. Getting the <laughs> boss or the salesperson to actually go, okay, let me take a step back. If I'm not encumbered with, oh man, that didn't work. This is working. If I just think in a strategic mindset, untethered to all the problems. I'm gonna give myself about an hour a day to let myself dream about the person that I wanna be and where I wanna be. So that's three simple things a day per salesperson. And everybody spent all their time doing defense. It's it, too easy. Hitting emails yeah. and doing that at like, whew, man, busy work. And the strategic was the most hard for people to do. Interesting. They can't think about where I want to be because they're dealing with the crap too much. Right. Kill the crap. Yep. That was fun. <laughs> so uh, that was, it's a beautiful way to look at things. And I can do simple things. Right. I don't, I don't have to convert anything. New, new call. I actually made a new call. Call Bubba because how he's doing. How are you going to engage that? And then think for a moment. If I don't have the earth to worry about or gravity, mm -hmm. where do I want to be? All those are simple things to do. If you neglect one, you kill you kill all offensive operations and all all your business if you don't do simple things on a daily basis. That's right. And you know, interacting with you about those three simple things really helped our business and the trajectory through this because 98% of our meetings were canceled across the country in mm -hmm. 47 states. I mean, a lot of people would have looked at that and gone, well, well, time to find something else to do, uh, or folded or been caught in chaos and fear. And through talking with you, we learned, okay, this is what we're going to do. Three simple things. I'm going to make 50 phone calls a day to new, mm -hmm. to new products. We're gonna make 50 phone calls a day. 
win, lose, or draw, 50 a day. That's the offense. Mm -hmm. On defense, we decided that since we couldn't meet in the departments because everything was shut down and we couldn't go to the agencies, we decided that we were going to handwrite 20 handwritten mm -hmm. notes a day to to places that we have been in and, mm -hmm. and, and, and people that we have met with. And, and, and you would have thought I was asking the sales force to sacrifice their first. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and then we were going to do that same strategic thought. Who, who am I going to be? What would they do? Yeah. Yeah. What would they, well, five years from now, this is who I want to be. What would that person do in year five, four, three, two, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and think strategically about it. And, and the results of that by the end, I think we have 70 people in territories right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've heard this, but on the offense, we will have, we will have called, I think it's somewhere around 300, 300,000 plus people mm. to connect with them mm. by the end of May. Yep. And handwritten notes to people, over 60,000 hmm. handwritten notes. And Tom, I can't tell you the results that we've gotten from that. It hmm. has been unbelievable. The people that have written handwritten notes back, the people that have sent messages, the people that have called, the opportunities it's opened up because we just did what we could do instead of going, well, we can't, I don't, well, yep. you know, I don't I'm gonna get caught in the fear and chaos. And so for the people listening, you may be thinking, you may be thinking, oh, I, I, well, I can't do that or that won't work here. We'll figure out what you can do. Yeah. What is the offense? So for Tom's business, connecting with one new person a day, that's been your strategy yeah. for, I mean, before Six all years. this. One yeah. a day. One a day. And, and developed an incredible lifestyle and income and, and exactly what he wanted. For us, it was making 50 phone calls, right? And, and, and so you have to figure out what that is for you and what that looks like, but it, it's transformative. Yeah, it has a different shape. You know, if you're, I actually don't try to make a close every day. Mm -hmm. And I had a mentor of mine say, success is you have to fight to be in front of people. That's right. What does that mean? So th that's what I call offense. I have to fight to be in front of one person. Sometimes it never is a conversion. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to transact. But you'll find something in that phone call or that interaction or that coffee that moves them or you down the road. That's right. And without fighting to get in front of that one person, sometimes it's 20 people in one day. Mm -hmm. You fight for the one, you get multiples. And it's so freaking uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I don't want to do it. Ah, it's a Sunday. Get on the phone. Like, ah, I can't. I don't want to take time away from my family. So then it takes twice as long. So whew, making the simple thing not negotiable right. has been, uh, to me, the most profound learning point is make things simpler than they should be. 50 may Absolutely. be too complicated. Mm -hmm. And how are y'all fleshed out the numbers? Right, right. So, I, okay, you give me a list of 50. I made 10. Hey, dude, you made 10. Yep. So what stopped you from 50? Maybe it's a time parameter. Maybe right. I can't get that done. Maybe you had 10 unbelievable yep. conversations, yep. and that took up the time one, span you had there. And you make a difference to one person. They associate that difference to you. If you don't think that's what sales is, it's not all transactional. It's just like you said, it was relational. So all of a sudden, you're like, I like the way you say it, you're the first and last thing that somebody thinks about. Yep. Whether you transact it or not is irrelevant. And all of a sudden, you're there in their conversation. And now the, you, you get offensive to get a big defensive pool. Mm -hmm. So the more people you've interacted with, now they're, they're warm leads. Right. They're not new leads. So now that's where the transaction happens is after the first one that was the most comfortable to get. Mm -hmm. And you know, who the hell makes 100% of their transactions on one phone call? Right. Like one guy told me, don't ever ask for something the first time you meet somebody, but you gotta meet them the first time. That's right. And I'm like, God, that's a waste of time. He goes, no, that was a more important meeting than the transactional one. That's right. And it was complicated in my mind. But in the SEAL teams, it was the same way. You have to learn one 
offensive thing a day. You have to get good at the defense. Then you have to see how it's all going to play out over time. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes SEALs so profoundly good in that space is they're getting good at one new thing a day. They're really perfecting their craft. And then they're seeing the ripples hit on a daily basis. That's right. And then in two weeks, you're like, I remember two weeks ago we were thinking about this. Yeah, it was close to what we thought about. Had you not had that strategic time, That's you right. wouldn't be able to you know, be there and be available to that moment when it happened. That's right. And I love the way you talked about it in Unbreakable, your, your first mm-hmm. book, bestseller, unbelievable book. Three simple things will dwarf that one too. I mean, it, it, that this one that's coming out is unbelievable. But um, I love the way you talked about honoring your word and never giving up. That's the foundation yeah. for everything. And so when Tom says that it's it's non-negotiable, and he does it on every day that ends in day, including yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. and Sunday, yeah. it's non-negotiable because he's committed to it and he will honor his word. And when when people learn to honor their word and never give up, oh my gosh. And 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 when I did the 24-hour walk with you, that was a, an incredible thing mm-hmm. for me personally because I, I was introduced to to why I stopped short in mm-hmm. things in life. And 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 the excuses were screaming yeah, at me. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> very. Yeah. Very. But yeah. but you explained you explained in SEAL training, they it, it, you know people are going through Hell Week, and you, as an because you went through mm-hmm. it five times. Um, I don't recommend that to everybody. But. You're a quick learner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you went through it five times, and so it it impacted you different. But and then you trained people through it. You're yeah. an instructor, and so and so you knew that that when someone would be close to winning or finishing. You just move it. You yep. moved it for them because you wanted to see were they committed to winning or were they committed to take another step, yep. keep going. Are they going to honor their word? And and man, that was so powerful for me. Yeah, I, and now that I'm in the business world, I can say sales is like combat. It's a total beatdown. Mm-hmm. Like you're getting shot at more than you shoot. Right. Like oh, it's brutal. And if you're not really committed, sales is not for you. Right. We go do another line of work. If you are committed, you'll have the best life in the world. And that's what, you know, in teaching a bunch of different companies and CEOs and, and leaders, let's break it down to the base level. If you're not the person that you say you are, don't expect anything, which that's is right. what I call honor your word. When, some, when I say something, I give it clarity and credence that I become that person that I say. So if I say I'm going to be there at 9, I'm going to be there at 9. If I'm not, I'm probably dead. Or something so dramatic has happened that you can, like, okay, something's happened. He's not here, as opposed to, oh, he's, he's going to come in with an excuse. And don't give up. Holy shit. So there's, there's a... A premise in Chinese, probably 3,000 years old, it takes 10,000 attempts to be good at anything. <laughs> That's sales. That's exactly. The first 9,999 didn't count. Who in sales is willing to do that? The ones who are successful. That's exactly I'm going to fail right. every single day until I die. And that's what sales is. That's right. Like, how many times are you willing to ask that girl out? Well, uh, she's going to say no. You just talked yourself out of it. Yep. Oh, my gosh. You talked yourself out of it, which is then and what I began to expose is the excuses are running everybody. Yep. And they're so subtle, seductive, and believable. Hmm. I'll excuse myself from making a million dollars because I don't feel good. Or you don't support me. And this is stupid. I'm gonna. I've never got a close. It's only 900 that you've tried. Try it again. Try it again. again. Adapt. But nobody's willing to do that. Fail one time. Fail again. Fail again. Don't keep doing it the same way. Keep adjusting. And I've not seen that be taught across the board. Yeah. Like when you guys onboard people, it's fail, 
Okay. Yeah. We're going to give you something that you're not going to do well. You're going to struggle. I just want to see you struggle. That's it. And that's what the whole SEAL program was dedicated to is you struggling constantly because we want you to struggle because the, the, the you that you're going to be through struggle is what the person that we want on the team. That's right. We want to struggle every freaking day. And it, that's why only 11% the crackheads make it through (laughs) it's they're willing to struggle they're like i don't care how it's going to turn out i'm just going to keep struggling every day and man if you do that it's actually easier it is easy give up i'm like uh you know if i give up here's what's going to happen it's going to get harder Yep. you're going to go back to where you were before you started then you have to start something new then you're going to quit and you're going to end up back where you were which is what that or farther behind talked about last night uh Oh, yeah. Let go all that bullshit and struggle. That's right. Struggle and adapt, and you will feel better. And your wife will and husband will appreciate it. Yeah, I love I love um, what you're getting ready to do with your family, and and Tom is getting ready to. And I'm sure that'll be at Unbreakable Leadership on Facebook. Are you going to put some? Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. You want to explain it, or so this is this is going to yeah. be interesting. I'm I'm excited to follow it. So, you know, like all of y'all, all all my family's home for one reason or the other. My daughter's in her senior year at West Point, so she's home learning how to be an Army officer in my house. And, uh, you know, my kid's a senior in high school, and my youngest is 13. And I'm always committed to teaching them things that are important and yeah, you didn't write the book Unbreakable for 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 it to be a bestseller. Yeah, for every, I wrote it to everybody. my kids. You wrote it to them. My yeah. angry angry wife put it online, and it, it did what it did. But so the, I'm like, what a great opportunity! We're gonna teach. I'm gonna be available to doing something with my kids because I like what you do. I'm, I'm gonna get muddy with them. It's the only mm-hmm. way to teach. And so we're gonna do 48 hours of you have to accomplish 48 miles of walking or jogging or whatever you want to do, but you got to move 48 miles in 48 hours yep. and it unravels people. Oh yeah. And it's a great way to be an athlete and it's simple. We're just going to walk or run, whatever you want to do. So every four, we decided to do it every four hours. We're going to try to get another four hours. So it's easy in the beginning. And then the human being unravels Mm -hmm. and it hurts and you get tired and gosh, you got to wake up again and and move again. But my kids will see something in them that they'd never seen before. And it's the same. You got to be offensive. You got to go act on the thing that is in front of you. Then you got to recover defense, stretch yourself. You got to stay hydrated and eat well, which is strategic. So those three simple things in in the physical space are move, recover, and hydrate. Yep. Over forty eight hours, and my wife's going to do it too. She's not an inherently you know gifted runner. My daughter's on the on the marathon team up there. Mm-hmm. She thinks, oh, I'll be able to run, you know, for an hour straight each four hours. I'm like, mm. At 24 hours, you won't want to run. I said, "Are you?" I asked her. I said, "Are you going to? Are you going to keep going if you can't run?" She goes, "No, I'll be able to run it." But I'm like, "That's why it's one mile an hour, Mm -hmm. because at the end, it's just walking. It is very difficult." Oh yeah. Wanting to get my kids to the point where they go, "Dad, I'm just going to walk. Is it okay to stop?" I want to hear that conversation at about four o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. Yes, it's okay. We can stop here. We can go rest for two hours and come back, but we have to get four miles every four hours. Yep. Simple. And I, I think that what they learn through that, I would love to have them back on a podcast and just interview your wife and three kids and yep. see what they learned through that. Um, because what they'll learn I'm just guessing mm-hmm. will be super simple, but it will impact their life for the rest of their life. Yep. And, and to see a 13 year old, a 19 year old, Gary's 19, right? 19. Yeah. 19. And your daughter is 20, 22, 22. Yeah. Um, that will be really, really interesting yep. to see how they process that and what they learn. Cause it, 
it won't be something they learn about out here. They're going to learn about in inside. Here. Yeah. yeah, it's going to happen inside. And the struggle is so, I do, you know, so the 24 hours, still the same thing. So all we did is walk for 24 hours. Yeah. And since we couldn't have one because the world told me th that we couldn't and they shut down all the parks and weren't allowed to it to do it, I was going to use that venue to create the same opportunity. Yeah. And that's just walking. But it's structured because I control it and I prevent people from going out too quick. Right. And so I'm going to have to learn to teach all of them to tether your oh, enthusiasm. Yeah. Right. And it's going to be interesting. But see my son have this experience at 13. That's he's going to be interesting. He's going to be crying, trying to convince me not to go. And mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, let's just walk 20 yards and sit down. But you can accomplish amazing feats. If you just move, commit and never give up, and never give up, honor your word. Cause I'm, I said that I was going to walk 48 miles yep, or move 48 miles. And that is a powerful statement. And the only way to do that is to own it and move it. That's right, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so yeah. much for being on here. I hope that, uh, what we talked about today can really impact your career. Um, whether you're in sales or not, and, and, and man, I am so grateful for you being here. I'm excited to follow this journey yeah. and, uh, and interview your, your wife and kids. I yeah. bet you they will have some unique things to say. Where's that at unbreakable leadership? Is that the Facebook page? So yeah. at unbreakable leadership. Yep. At unbreakable leadership. The book is three simple things. Um, learning how to lead through chaos, yeah. which man, has the world ever needed that more than right now? Wow. It's time. But, uh, Let's yeah, do it, it. Is time. It is time, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. And uh, just so you know, this is the Sales Wolves podcast, number 168. And today we're your Sales Wolves. Uh, you got to howl again. Howl again. Let's howl do again. it. Ah Thanks, man. Love y'all. <laughs>